Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be unraveling this case. I don't know, yesterday I looked at it, it looked pretty simple to me. Uh, it's a Kingston Data Traveler with a busted connector. Uh, nothing really to it, but uh, from quick glance, I can see that some work on it has been done and it looks like uh, the trace had actually been reconnected. So I don't know what was the reason for it not to work. Uh, I'm going to link everything together. I'll, I'll show you the steps I take. Uh, to diagnose these things and hopefully you can find a solution for it. Worst comes to worst, the chip is gonna get taken off and we're gonna get it recovered directly. Um, but any device that comes in with signs of damaged connector was working before the connector got broken. So if anything, it's a printed circuit board that got damaged and maybe something else in the form of other components got uh, disconnected from the board, mm, rendering the device unfunctional so the job is to put the pieces back together and make it work so i guess we can start turn on all the accessories the light most importantly there's our unit and that's what we're going to be working with today so looks fairly simple nothing overly complicated one two if you look at the microscope view, you can see that uh, things are looking like they've been worked on before. And there's been some solder actually contact here that made its way, I guess, to the pad eventually. This is broken, this is gone. And the connector that came with it is also, yeah, there's the leftover wire that's hanging off. this out of the way. So to put the connector back on we need some uh, some of this braid and I'm gonna need to use a thicker iron. 741 is what I use in my 245. Left behind. USB connectors with nine pins they exist in two types. Blizzard, he had a post a long ago uh, that describes the, the variety of different connectors and how to work with them. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. He has beautiful write-up about it. So if you wanna find out what the differences are, you can go there and see. If we look at our device here, what we got is a correct uh, connector because first of all, this is a standard connector. If you look at how, uh, the, how the pads are arranged, the second one is power. Trace is really nice and thick, like that here. Uh, over here we have a ground plane, and over here we got a ground plane. So this is what we want to check out. Um, you see, this is the USB 2.0 interface. It has two of these uh, data signals. We got power feed and we got a ground on the USB 3 uh, that is stacked up close to each other like this okay we got power we have uh, ground in here and we have ground in there so if we were to put a USB 2 connector on there uh, we would only affiliate these four connections we go back to our connector view and we skip this pad we put probe here and probe here they're both ringing that means they're connected if we had this version of a connector we would not be ringing right here because uh, that would mean we would need this little tiny trace link up with our ground and it doesn't you see I'm probing them and they're not ringing tin things up do this here as far as here and cut it these wires in Grab some tweezers.
and that is it always make sure that you check all of these headers to make sure they're still connected plugging it into um, further diagnostic equipment could tell us more about what's going on with the device we're going to power on the unit through the interface but i don't see anything happening really let me get the monitor on there power up with the unit powered on actually we're getting good consumption and it stays at the level it should be staying at and we're getting our device to be recognized so uh, what seems to be happening is that our USB 3 uh, connection must have failed us and uh, could have potentially broken off on that last wire that was heading in so right now it's connected as um, USB 2 without any issues because we're getting good consumption and it's running wild open up our studio you can see some activities happening back there and do a little scrolling we can see that our device navigates and all of these different um, digits here indicate that we're actually getting good translation and the data is being produced so at this point uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clone this device on PC3000 just to make sure that the image is perfect and I don't have to uh, rely on functionality of this device again um, I have this guy that I'm gonna plug in to the USB port on portable 3 there we go that's plugged in and in our utility I've selected to image the device onto uh, port 1 hard drive that's right there and uh, when the utility is loaded up this is what we see here power on the USB device it is connected now we can start our task and we can fire up the uh, the transfer process so let's have a look at the speed it's running at 25 megabytes per second which is pretty good we can go into the structure and we can see that it's a FAT32 Kingston um, partition. Let's go and select all of the use space. 25 gigs. Let's uh, go ahead and image all of it. Make a copy of the object and let it run. So I'm not sure exactly if there's something that was damaged on the circuit board level or if that connection that I made wasn't good enough. The trick that did work here is actually uh, this monitoring device. So that monitoring device runs off of a USB 2.0. So using that in the middle works as a reducer and also a converter. Uh, per se <laughs> that only leaves USB 2.0 uh, connection on and uh, because it's downgradable USB 2.0 allows us to communicate with the device fully without any loss of the data um, my guess would be is that it wasn't the connection point because previous place tried it from the looks of it I tried it uh, but for some reason it didn't want to work and uh, if it didn't want to work, there must be something that maybe uh, is uh, broken on the uh, internal layers. Like the, the via could be snapped in the middle so the connection isn't being made. Now, it's something that could be tested, but it just it's a lot of work. And with the speed of 25 megabytes per second, it just really makes no sense. Hopefully you guys learned something new. Definitely uh, hit thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to this channel if you're new here and if you're interested in data recovery. If you lost any of your data on a flash drive and you need it back, Check the link in the description, all of our info is there. We'll be more than glad to help you out. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you all in the next episode.